take to produce the food that we eat? Do you know how many apples you can get from a single apple tree? Or how much water it takes to grow enough potatoes to make four portions of chips? Or maybe how much space you'd need to grow enough wheat to make enough bread for everyone in this room to have a sandwich? Or how much fertilizer you'd need to grow tomatoes that were big enough to slice into a salad? The reality is, we probably don't know what it takes. When you live in the city, you're cut off from food production. Food is something that happens elsewhere. And when we're hungry, when we go to the shops, as if by magic, it just appears. But the reality is that the way in which a lot of the food that we eat is produced is unsustainable. Our food system already uses 50% of available land. It uses 70% of available fresh water. And globally, agriculture creates 30% of man-made greenhouse gas emissions. In London alone, each year, feeding us as a city creates 19 million tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent. And 44% of that comes from primary production, comes from agriculture. And after all of that effort and that energy and those resources and that time and that money, in the UK, we throw away up to half of everything we've grown. We live in a world with a growing global population. And the FAO predicts that by 2050, more than 70% of people are going to be living in cities. So how are we going to feed all those people living in cities sustainably? We need to help existing farmers farm in a way that's more sustainable, that's more efficient. But we also need to start looking for new technologies. Last year, the University of Sheffield carried out some research that suggested that the soil in the UK has only 100 harvests left in it until it's depleted. So this isn't something that we need to be thinking about for the future. It's something we need to be thinking about now. We need to think outside the box of how we're going to feed people and think about what innovation is available to us. Actually, today I'm going to talk to you about something that happens inside a box that we think is a technology that's part of the future of feeding people. It's a technology called aquaponics. Aquaponics is a combination of two well-established farming practices. Aquaculture, farming fish, and hydroponics, growing in a nutrient solution without soil. So we take the waste from the fish farm and we pump it through to hydroponic growing benches. These benches are stacked vertically. And at each level, the plants have exactly the right conditions that they need to grow well. We control the light, the water, the temperature, the humidity. The plants then absorb the waste nutrients from the water, clean the water for the fish, and the whole system recirculates. We don't use any chemical fertilizers or pesticides. And because we're controlling the environment, we can grow a consistent quality and quantity of food all year round. Aquaponics isn't a new technology. It's been around for a really long time. Hundreds of years ago, in the rice paddies in China, farmers would flood their fields and they would put fish uh, into the fields. The fish would eat the bugs, they would fertilize the plants, and then the farmers would drain the fields and they'd have rice and fish with which to feed their families. So we've got the technology. Now we need a business model that makes sense if we're going to grow this food for people living in cities. Now, it doesn't make sense to grow everything in the city. Take something like corn or wheat, for example. Those products need a lot of space, but they can also be stored and processed and transported quite easily. What it does make sense to grow for the city in the city is something like lettuce or rocket or coriander or basil. These delicious and healthy vegetables and herbs that should be forming a part of all of our daily diet. Now, in aquaponics, you might be thinking, would I really want to eat something that's been grown in using this technology? Would it taste better if it had come from good old traditional farming? But the reality is, in our industrialized food system, lots of the fresh produce that you buy from supermarkets is being grown hydroponically and being grown reliant on fossil fuel-based fertilizers. That food's being grown 1,000 miles away and it's being grown so that it can be transported all the way to your supermarket shelf. 
which means it has to be grown to survive that journey and to be the right shape and size to look okay on the supermarket shelf once it's got there. So taste is pretty much forgotten. When was the last time you opened a bag of salad and scattered the leaves on your plate and thought, wow, this is, this is great salad? Just, I bet it wasn't that recently. Because realistically, when you're growing something to be transported, you're not thinking about what it's going to taste like at the end. Now, if you grow food locally for people and you don't have to transport it, you can find that salads can be crunchy and delicious. And when you grow them aquaponically, you don't need to use any fossil fuel-based fertilizers so you can reduce the environmental impact that you have. And it just so happens that the nutrients that salads and herbs need to grow are found in almost exactly the right quantities in the waste produced by fish. So I'll tell you a little bit about the fish. Now, you may be thinking, hmm, not sure about fish farming as a sustainable and ethical way of feeding people. But again, we have to think about, in reality, how our food system is working. Since 1968, 29% of our wild fish stocks have collapsed. And scientists predict that if we continue to fish in the way that we're fishing now, by 2048, all of our wild fish stocks will have collapsed. Recirculating aquaculture, the type used in aquaponics, if done well, can represent a viable way of producing sustainable protein for local communities. Take the fish that's farmed most commonly in aquaponics, tilapia. It's a mild white fish. You may have had it before in curries. It takes on flavors really well, and you can use it in lots of different cooking. But the thing that's really interesting about tilapia is what it eats and how it eats. So if you take something like salmon and you farm salmon, you have to feed a salmon almost 3.1 kilos of fish food to produce one kilo of fish. So it doesn't have a very good feed conversion ratio. Whereas with tilapia, you only have to feed a tilapia about 1.7 kilos of feed in order to produce one kilo of fish. And tilapia are omnivorous, which means you don't have to feed them on wild caught fish. You can feed them on fish food made from insects or from algae or from byproducts of food processing. So by using this way of producing fish, you can really start to break the cycle of unsustainability that happens with some types of fish farming. So we've got uh, a source of protein that we can produce and we've got delicious herbs and salads that we can grow. How much space do we need to produce this delicious food to feed people in cities? The answer is quite a lot. And in a city where space is at a premium, you've got to take the space that's available to you. For us, that was a 6,000 square foot warehouse in East London. We took an empty industrial space, it hadn't been used for about two years, and we built a farm that's designed to be commercially operated and to show what's possible in terms of using industrial space. So on the left-hand side, you can see the aquaculture system where we have 12 tanks, each holding around 400 fish. The water circulates through those tanks and then into the filtration system. In that filtration system, any solid waste can be removed and the biofilter converts the ammonia from the fish waste into the nitrates that the plants need. The water then gets pumped across into the hydroponics area where we're controlling the whole environment to create the best environment possible for the plants. Once we're ready to harvest, we uh, deliver a bioelectric van to our local customers and on a farm of this size can produce around 20,000 kilos of salad and 4,000 kilos of fish every year. Now, that sounds like quite a lot of food, but actually it's only enough to feed 3,000 people. So even though this farm looks huge, we've still got a long way to go before urban aquaponic farming can start to have a really significant impact on food production. But it does need to. And the great thing about this way of farming inside a box, inside a warehouse, is that you can do it anywhere. You can build these farms in any city, in any part of the world, and you can grow local food to local uh, demand on farms that have been specifically designed to grow what's needed locally. Uh, and if you want to build more farms like that, you need to have people to run them. Now, um, we can't go out and just hire people with a GCSE in urban farming to come and work for us. So we've designed our own training program and we're hiring young people from the local area to come and work with us so we can teach them about fish husbandry 
and horticulture, customer service, and what it takes to run a sustainable business. It's really important for urban sustainable food production to be part of how we fix the future food system. But it's equally important that if we're going to create sustainable cities, we're creating jobs and training opportunities. And that's where urban farming has the potential to play a huge role in developing these cities of the future. So why is it important that we're developing those cities of the futures? Well, as a reminder, they're the places where the majority of the world's population is going to live. So we have to be creating places that people want to live in and that can support themselves sustainably. Urban farming has the potential to create cities where collaboration is encouraged all along the supply chain, from developers, through to local councils, through to retailers, through to, most importantly, the consumer, you, at the end. Because when you build farms in cities, close to people, and you give them access to see how their food is produced and what it takes to produce it, you reconnect them with the whole story of their food. And when they're reconnected, they're much more likely to make better choices about the food that they buy and they eat. We're trying to create a food future where the salad, the delicious salad that you had for your lunch, has been grown just next door, and where you can find out exactly how the sustainably farmed fish fingers that you're about to have for dinner were produced. Thank you.